My name is Dries. I've exhibited my work throughout the world in galleries as well as museums, Berlin, Buenos Aires, London. And I've obviously also sold my work online through marketplaces, through online galleries, through my own website. And so if you are a beginner, this video is likely going to save you a couple of years of your life. Now, the first place on this list is to sell your art on social media. Now, the advantages of this is that it's very easy to combine with other strategies that you're using to build your art career, namely growing on social media. And on top of that, it's also free. And you obviously also have have complete freedom. You can sell at whatever price points, you can make whatever you want. You don't have to listen to galleries telling you what to make, what not to make, or anything like that. Now, the disadvantage of selling on social media is that it's extremely hard to do so. There is no shopping page on most social media pages, and so there's always an extra layer between the customer being interested in what you make and then also buying, and this, this makes it much harder. The second place to sell your art on are online marketplaces like eBay and Etsy and things like that. Now the advantage here is that you don't need any audience to start selling. You can use SEO strategies, meaning that you can put your artworks in line with things that people are searching for on those websites when they're searching for products to buy. And so through these SEO strategies, you can drive traffic down with your art without having an audience, without having money or any of those things. And so it's very easy for beginners to start selling on those platforms. Now, on top of that, you also don't need any web development skills to build your own page out. It's all done for you. And so again, this makes it very easy for beginners to start. Now, the disadvantage is that the people who are shopping on these places are expecting very low price points. They expect cheap products. And so you cannot sell your art at high price points. You cannot sell fine art for two, three, four, five, six K on those places. On top of that, because it has this brand of cheapness, there are no serious art collectors shopping on those places. And so you will not find scouts, gallerists, dealers that are searching for new artists to represent, collectors that are searching for new artists to collect, and then to help those artists out building their careers. And then a third disadvantage is that you're not collecting any data of the customer who is landing on your page, which would be the case with, for example, having your own website. And then you can use that data. You can use the fact that they went on your website to then retarget them on later time spans, two, three, four, five, six months later with campaigns, with advertisements. And this is extremely powerful. Retargeting campaigns is where all the gold is when it comes to online selling. And so you're missing out on all of that. The third place on this list are traditional art galleries. Now the advantage of selling with traditional art galleries is of course that you are targeting serious art collectors, collectors that have more means to buy art at higher price points. We're taking three, four, five, six K and above. And so this is ideally where you end up later in life at some point, hopefully. Another benefit is that you can outsource or at least partially outsource the selling and marketing of your art. Now, be careful. A lot of artists start thinking about this and they, they hope, they dream of a life where they can just make art and don't have to do selling and marketing and all of that stuff. But I can guarantee you that every single artist that is represented by a gallery continuously is doing marketing and is selling their work themselves as well continuously. And so this, this, this dream life actually doesn't really exist. And then a third benefit is that there's a lot of authority connected to working with traditional art galleries, something that, for example, YouTube or Instagram or other platforms don't really have. And some of the negatives are, of course, that it's not really beginner friendly. It's very hard to get into those places. And if you're a beginner, you've tried to sell your art for, let's say, the last year, then it's nearly impossible to enter those places unless you have connections from family, uh, which parents, whatever you have, I don't know. A second negative is that you will need more than one gallery to survive and so you'll likely need perhaps four or five six galleries in that low level gallery field that all sell your work to then make a living from your art and so there's a lot of communication going on a lot of time that actually goes into those things and and not into making your art you would be surprised and then a third negative is in that many cases you will be less free to make whatever you want the gallery owners will know hey this sells and then they will expect you to make more of that type of art and that's completely normal that's completely normal that's that that's the most logic thing to do but a lot of artists have some difficulties with this and so take that into account of course the four places to sell your art on are these online galleries like Saatchi art art finder single art things like that and the advantage here is that just like with Etsy and all of those places it's extremely easy to start selling your art if you've never sold art before in your life you can literally take your phone start taking some pictures of the art that you have ready in your studio today and then edit them a little bit, upload them, fill in everything that they ask, and you will literally be selling at the end of the day already. I've 
you, you might not actually sell, but you're at least trying to sell. And so that's, that's, that's a good start. And then on top of that, you will actually have serious art collectors on these places and you will be able to sell at higher price points if, if, if you're comfortable with that. It's not uncommon for art to be sold at 10K price points on these platforms. Now, before you will sell at 10K price points, you will have to be able to drive traffic to those places, drive collectors that have that type of kind of money, and then they will start buying and then the online gallery will see that they start buying, etc., etc. The ball goes rolling like that. And so if you have no marketing power whatsoever, these places might not actually be the best place to start. Some of the negatives are again that you are not collecting any customer data. You cannot use that data to then retarget those potential customers or people who just watched your art with advertisements in the future, which is where all the money is. And of course, these galleries, these online galleries are collecting that data. And so all the traffic that you're driving, all the collectors that you are driving, they are then reusing that to sell other artworks to those same collectors. And so this is, I mean, this is, this is one of the negatives, you know, this is one of the negatives. On top of that, they will obviously also take huge cuts. We are thinking 35%, 40%, sometimes even 50%. And what they are doing for you in the beginning is nothing. They will not be driving traffic towards your art. They will not result in sales in the beginning. You first have to make sure that you sell on these platforms and then they will start to feature your work in collections. Then they will start to feature your work on the main page where you will indeed get some sales from them. And so this is something to think about. In the beginning, you are bringing way more value to them than they are to you. The fifth place to sell your art are art fairs and the benefits here there's kind of one benefit that just jumps above all of them. If you go to art fairs, you will have thousands of people that are looking to buy art right there in one weekend. It's by far the easiest place to sell your art as a beginner. It's not uncommon for artists who have no following, who have done nothing yet with their careers, go to an art fair, an independent art fair, and then sell 10 pieces at 1,000, 1,500 euro in one weekend. And so this is unheard of. You will not sell that amount in a weekend or a week or a month on Instagram. That's just not going to happen as a beginner or two months or three months. I mean, it's very hard. On art fairs, it becomes slightly easier. Now the downsides are that it's extremely expensive and the majority of artists on those art fairs are not selling anything. And so 20% of artists on those fairs are running away with 80% of the profits, meaning that you have to be one of the best. And if you're not, then you're losing a lot of money. When I went to the other art fair in London during the Frieza Art Week, I paid around $3,000, $4,000 for my stand alone that is not calculating in the travel cost, transporting my art, transporting myself, and then also the, the living arrangement there, I, I don't know, like hotel, that's a name in English, hotels and stuff like that. And so that, that was likely close to a 5K budget that I needed for that one weekend. And so this is something to take into account. If you then go and you sell nothing, which is very common as well, then you just lost 5k. The sixth place to sell your art on or the sixth type of thing that you can do is selling NFT artworks, making NFTs from your art and then selling that. Here's the thing, if you do that, then you are benefiting from the NFT high boom that is going on at the moment. I've seen artists who haven't sold anything in the last five years, so sold one, two, three pieces for price points of 300, 400, 500 dollars, perhaps 800 dollars. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, they go and make NFTs, they sell NFTs, and they are selling without an audience, without, without representation by galleries, without anything. They are selling at 8K price points, $10,000 price points. It's, it's massive. And this is simply not possible on any of the things that I just mentioned. You can go from $300 to $10,000 in a matter of weeks on Instagram or, or art fairs or any of those places. It's just not possible. It's only possible with NFTs at this moment. On top of that, you're also stepping towards the future. It's always better to go towards where the puck is going to be than towards where the puck is at this moment. That's some kind of ice hockey wisdom, whatever. Now, one of the downsides, and this is huge, huge as well, one of the downsides is that you will most likely, if you go there and you succeed, if, if you fail, you fail. 
Okay, cool. But if you succeed and you suddenly start selling at 8K price points, 10K price points, with all due respect, but these artists are not going to sell at 10K price points four years from now. That art will go down under. And so these artists suddenly, four years from now, five years from now, will have to face the realization that their art is not worth $10,000. It's not. They don't have the demand created for that to be worth that much. And so... What's going to happen is that five years from now, all of those collectors, a couple of collectors that bought it at 10K, now they will suddenly say, hey, wait a minute, this artist are not selling anymore. And or they are selling at thousand dollar price points. Wow, I made a bad investment. Here's the thing. If you go and look at the top level artists, the NFTs of like the 50s and 60s, mid 20th century, what was NFTs? Well, it was magazines. You know, everybody was featured in magazines, all the top level artists, magazine, 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 what social media is today probably. And if you look at the artists then, the, the famous artists that were featured in magazines, most of them, most of that art, you can now buy at $10 at flea markets. And so, that's what happens. That's what happens if you are not an artist that is putting in the work, creating the demand, then your prices will drop to nearly zero. And that will happen with the NFTs at this moment. And then another downside is that there's a steep learning curve. NFTs, that's technology, and you have to kind of wrap your head around wallets, around gas fees, around all of those things that make it harder for people to start using it. Seventh place on this list is selling on your own website. Now, one of the positives is obviously the thing that I've been talking about, collecting your customer data and the visitor data. You will know who is visiting your website. You will know who is checking out your, your checkout page, who is checking out which page of, of which place on your website. And you will be able to then advertise to those people with targeted advertisements towards them. And so this is very powerful. And on top of that, you also have complete control over prices, over which art you make, over your brand, the colors, everything that you can imagine. Now, some of the negatives is that it is actually pretty hard. If you don't have any audience yet, if you don't know anything about marketing, then you will not be able to drive traffic towards your website through SEO, through Google, through social media, through advertisement, whatever it is. All of those things are pretty hard. And so if you don't know any of those things, you like nobody is going to visit your website. Nobody. And so this is something to take into account. The learning curve is very, very high here. Not just to make your website, which is probably the easiest part, but to what I just said, driving the traffic. And then on top of that, there's also a monthly cost involved in maintaining that website. And so if you are not selling anything on there, nobody is visiting, then you are paying 20, 30, 40 dollars every single month. And you're not really getting any returns on it. I mean, hopefully you're getting returns on it, but in the worst case scenario, you're not getting returns. And so that's something to take into account. Now, the next thing that we have to do is to actually give you the best one, which is the best one of these seven options that I just mentioned. And it's going to be different for everybody. Beginners will have a different best option than intermediate people, than advanced people. And so this is a rather complex thing to answer, to be honest. And so it would likely take me another 10, 15 minutes. And because of that, I'm very sorry, but we are not going to do that predominantly because I already did in another video, it's called best place to sell art online. It's linked up in the description and in the end screen that said, get the hell out of here.